Greetings, brethren. This has been weighing on my heart lately, so I would want to get out there the uh, correct interpretation. So I want to uh, expound uh, James chapter 2 for you. So let's start. Uh, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Uh, God does not show partiality. He does not judge on unbound scales. So we shouldn't uh, be partial with uh, respect our persons, raise certain peoples in higher regard than, than, than others. Uh, verse 2, for there come unto us some, their assembly, a man with gold, a gold ring and godly apparel, and there come in also a poor man and fire ring. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, and sit here under my footstool. Are you not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren. Have not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he saith promised to them that love him. So this is a key part. Love him. Promised the heirs, which is rich in faith. So here's the key words, rich in faith. Promised the heirs of the kingdom that are rich in faith, which he has promised to them that love him. All right, continuing, uh, verse 6, but ye have despised the poor. Do not the rich, or rich men oppress you and draw you before judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme the worthy name by which ye are called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. But if you respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law and transgressors. If you are partial, uh, you are committing sin and will be convinced to be as guilty as the transgression of the law. According to the royal law of God, according to Moses. Um, for whoso shall keep the whole law, yet offend one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery. He said, also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they shall be judged by the law of liberty. And this law of liberty is uh, the gospel, the, the law of the spirit, the spirit of life, the, the gospel of freedom. For he, for he shall have judgment without mercy, that he shall no mercy, and mercy rejoice against judgment. What doth a prophet, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? So it says, what does it profit, my brethren, that someone that had, says he has faith, but does not show in his works, can that faith save him? So what, what does it mean that uh, works save you? No, you are not just fiber of works, although later in this passage it says that Abraham was justified by works. Is this a con contradiction between uh, Paul and uh, James? No, it's not. What, what does it mean? Can faith save him? What does it say, prophet, my brother? If a man is say, say he has faith, but has no work, can, this, can faith save him? So we go to Galatians 5, 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circ circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, so it's not by works of the law, but by faith which worketh by love. See, there, there's the key word. But faith which worketh by love. 
you know that the fruit of the spirit, one of the fruits of the spirit is love. So if your faith is not uh, producing this love, it does not profit anyone or it does not profit even yourself. You are suppressing the Holy Spirit. You're quenching the Holy Spirit, suppressing uh, this kind of love being shown to men. So what is a prophet? Can this kind of faith, this genuine faith, this professing faith save you? No, but uh, it's not saying it, it's a hypothetical, but um, but uh, he's saying to remember the, the, the genuine faith that you have, a faith that loved God because the fruit of spirit is love and God is love. If you do have, if you do not love God, you do not know God. So, so it's talking about, about a hypocritical faith that, um, you know, remember the faith that saved you, that worked work by love that you it's a genuine uh love for jesus christ the genuine uh faith can a ungenuine faith save you no of course not uh, ungenuine faith uh, 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 um, empty faith cannot save you but a, a faith that actually has a sincere heartfelt uh b belief uh can save you so th this is what it's saying. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be warmed, and fill, notwithstanding ye give them not, not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Your, your faith is not profited. It is being unfruitful. Uh, uh, unfruitful. You are suppressing the, the 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 Holy Spirit. You question the Holy Spirit working in your life, because the the faith that saved you uh, is um, the faith that saved you. And the dwelling by the Spirit is the one that works by love, because the the Spirit that indwells you, uh, the the fruit of that produces this love. So it's empty faith. It does not profit you or no anybody. Seventeen. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, it's dead, being alone, dead, unfruitful, unprofitable. Eighteen. Yea, a man may say, "Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith." By my works, you say you have faith, but uh, but I have the works. Show me your faith. How can you show me your faith without your works? I'll show you faith by my works. By your works, uh, people, uh, your works is a witness towards men. You know. Something that uh, it produces, it, it produces love. So it, it's a it's it, it's a witness towards men. That, that's one of the things. Like, uh, oh, he's not very truly loving. Um, th that, that's a warning. That's a red flag. It, it, that's a warning sign. That's one of the warning signs. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also, also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham, my father, justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, unto the altar? 
Oh, this is a contradiction. I thought we weren't uh, justified by works. By um, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, by grace ye are saved through faith, uh, not of, uh, excuse me, <laughs> uh, by grace ye are saved through faith, not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not by works, least any man should boast. Does this contradict? No. Go Romans chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. What shall we say that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found? So what did he find? How, what did he receive? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath the wherefore to glory, but not before God. So he has a glory before men. What is his glory? Well, for one, it's good deeds, but it's not that glory. Um, for what say the scripture, Abraham believed God, and was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, we have that he, that faith, uh, that uh, he was justified by works. Well, he was counted to him the righteous that believed when he believed God. Now to him that worketh is not the reward re reckon of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believed on him, but justified the ungodly. His faith is counted for him to his faith is counted for him to righteousness. Yeah, it was David had described the blessed of the man unto whom God imputed the righteous without works. Say, blessed are those uh, they who are iniquities are forgiven, who are sins are covered. So, God imputes righteousness without works. His faith is kind of righteousness. So, it's faith without works. But if he's saying faith with that the works, uh, yeah. Is this talking about uh, first in Genesis 15? He, he believed God was counted for righteousness. In Genesis 15, is the first time it says it, it was reckoned unto him, um, it was counted unto him righteousness. In, and uh, that, that's when he believed the promise. Genesis 22 is when he actually offered. His, his son Isaac up and it says that's the second time where it says counted unto him righteousness so there's a righteousness positionally before God glory before God and glory uh, in in the earthly uh, being a just man on this earth a just man before men glory for before God which is by uh, through faith and a, and a glory before men through works, but you are not saved by your works. You are saved by your faith, and it's not by faith and works. So, so we'll continue. We'll explain uh, how Abraham was justified that um, it, here here in a bit. Uh, verse 22, seeth thou that how faith wrought with his works and by works was his faith made perfect. So his faith, his faith wrought, worketh, uh, worked alongside with his works. And by works, uh, his faith was for perfected, uh, come to fruition, completed. So we go to First John, four, chapter four, verses seventeen to twenty-one. Herein is our love made per perfect, 
so our love may be perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so we are in this world. So our, our love may be perfect, we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, we, we are in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God, whom he has seen? And this is the commandment have we from him, that he who loved God loved his brother also. So our love is made perfect uh, by, by God. When we love God, he loved us and it perfects. And the, the, the word is uh, loving your brother is what makes it complete, makes it come to fruition. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God and was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. So let's go to back to Genesis and look at this, these uh, accounts, uh, this, this line of events. Genesis 15, verses 1 to 7. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram, and a vision saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great a reward. I am, and Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? And it Okay, sorry for that uh, interruption. And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given me no seed, and lo, one born in my house is not mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thine heir. And he, said, and he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So, so shall thy seed be. So is, uh, the Lord told him, told Abram. At that time, he, he was called Abram, not Abraham. Told him, look at the stars in heaven. If you would be able to count them, uh, Saying that uh, if you're able to count them, uh, you, you can't. You can't be able to count them. If, if that would be able to. Basically, saying your your descendants shall be like the, the stars in the sky. The, the, the number of them shall be like the stars in the sky. Like the, there's like a million stars, so, so shall I see be. So your 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 seed shall you shall be a father of many nations basically, and your seed you shall multiply uh, abundantly. And he believed the Lord, and he counted to him for righteousness. Now this was the glory uh, that. Uh, he counted for righteousness. This was the faith that counted for righteousness. He was saved in, in Genesis 15. He got, he has to glory, not, um, he had glory uh, before God. 
he, he was justified before God. But in Genesis 22, he was justified before men and uh, sealed uh, th this covenant. Um, but uh, he had a glory before men that uh, he shall be father of many nations. So um, and he said unto him, I'm the Lord that thou brought thee out of the out of earth of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. Now that's the first uh, that his faith was counted from righteousness. It was justified before God and 15. 17 is about the covenant and the seal of the covenant, which was circumcision. And verse one of Genesis 17, verse one. And when Abram was 90 years old, uh, 90 years, 99 years old, nine years old and nine, so 99 years. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the, the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. I'll make my covenant between me and thee. I will multiply thy seed, uh, multiply thee exceedingly. Abraham, excuse me, and Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. So here's the covenant, a promise. Here's the promise. You shall be a father of many nations. I shall make a covenant between you and me, and behold my covenant. You, if the fulfillment of this covenant, you shall be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name be any more called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For father of many nations have I made thee. So he changed his name from Abram to Abraham, meaning father of many nations, his covenant name. I'll make thee exceedingly fruitful. I'll make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. So this is a father of many nations. Your descendants shall be many, and your descendants shall be kings. I'll establish my covenant between me and thee, <clears throat> and thy seed after thee in their generations for everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. I'll give thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and there shall be a token of the covenant between betwixt me and you, between me and you. So this is the seal of the covenant. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house and brought with money, a bought with money, or any stranger which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be uh, circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Like God said unto Abraham, as for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Now bless her and give thee a son also of her, he shall bless her, and shall be a mother of nations, kings of peoples shall be of her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, 
shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. I'll establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and I'll make him fruitful, and I'll multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall be he beget, and I'll make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, and Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time the next year. And he left all walking with him. God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael's son, and all that were born in his house, and all that was bought with his money, every man among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their force again, in the same day as God has said unto him. And Abraham was ninety year old, ninety years old and nine, or ninety-nine years old, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. So he was ninety-nine. But this is chapter 17. Before he was counted, uh, his faith was counted righteousness the first time. So that, that's a note right there. He, this is 17. Of the, in 15, he was, his faith was counted unto him righteousness the first time. And all men of his house, born in his house, bought with money or of a spirit, or um, with money of the stranger were circumcised with him. Now we get to Genesis 12, 1 18. And it came to pass over these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, you are mine. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Mor Moriah, and offer him. Therefore, a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. They of him rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the, the wood of the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God hath told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and set, saw the place far off. And Abraham said unto his young men, By ye, here with the ass, and I told and 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 I and the lad will go go yonder and worship and come again unto you to you. And Abraham took the word of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and took the fire in his hand, and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham's father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the, the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to a place which God has told them of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. An angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know thou fearest God, seest thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead 
instead of his son. And Abram called, called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it said to this day, the mount of the Lord shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abram out of the heaven a second time and said, By myself I sworn, saith the Lord. For behold, thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I'll bless thee, in multiplying I'll multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the sea shore, and thy sheets and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So since he obeyed God, he inherited this blessing. So that, that's the context that he, he, he has to glory upon before men. Be uh, uh, re receive honor of being a father of many nations. Let's see. Because if we read uh, uh, on in Romans chapter 4, 9 to 18, cometh his blessing of them upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it reckoned when he was circumcised, uh, when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. So his faith was reckoned for righteousness. When when was it? When he was he circumcised? Was it reckoned when he was circumcised or not circumcised? I was reckoned before he was circumcised in chapter 15. He was circumcised in chapter 17. And he, uh, the, and uh, he received the blessing, the, the glory before God uh, for men in chapter 22. So he received the sign of circumcision, seal of the righteousness of the faith which you had when he was yet being uncircumcised. So this is chapter 17, the circumcision, the seal of the righteousness that he received when he was not circumcised, back in chapter 15. So the righteousness, which was by faith, and not by works, was this faith, faith uh, righteousness reckoned of? That he received this righteousness by faith and not by works when he was not uh, not yet being circumcised. Uh, when Back in fifth, chapter 15, he wasn't circumcised yet. That was the glory before God. But uh, in chapter 22, that's the glory before men are, are upon this world that he would be the father of nations. He received honor upon this uh, in this world. That you might be a father of them that believe. So a father of them. So that this um the Abraham covenant was not this end, but until that seed should come. That was through Isaac, through Jacob. And that seed is Christ. That all nations shall be blessed by thy seed. That seed is Christ. We are blessed, those who believe. In him, thought, thought, though they not be circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Though they they are not circumcised, so we don't have to be circumcised, but that uh, the righteousness, which uh, by faith would be imputed unto them also, the father of circumcision to them are of the circumcision. Um, and the father sickmen are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the step of that faith of our father Abraham, which when he that he had 
when he was not yet circumcised for the promise that he should be the heir of the heir of the world is not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So that promise would be inherited by through the righteousness, which is of faith. So we are imputed, charged, not covered in it, that to be can't God can't see us, but this imputed means charged, reckoned of grace. And he does not impute sin. So he does not charge us with the, the penalty of sin no more, but the, he charges us, he uh, attributes us as righteous. For if they were which are of all law be heirs, faith has made void. So if if the heirs of this promise was by it was by the law, if receive this promise by the law, faith is made void. The the, the, the promise would be non effect. But because the law worketh wrath, for where there's no law, for where no law is, there's no transgression. Therefore, it is a faith that might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure of to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that which is of the faith of Abraham, who is father of us all. So where there's no law, we're not under the law, so there's no transgression, there's no penalty. Those who have uh, applied to salvation It's not that the, the morals of the law is abolished, but the, the, the penalty of the law, the penalty of breaking it. For there is no law, there's no transgression. As written, I made thee a father of many nations before him, whom ye believed, even God, who, ha, who quickens the dead and called those things which be not as the, they were who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to which was spoken, so, so shall thy seed be. So uh, we'll go back to James chapter two. So this scripture was fulfilled. Abraham believed God. It was imputed for him righteous. So what how what does it mean to justify by works? Uh, you're justified being a just man before men. Glory to this world, uh, in this life. A glory to in this life. You'd be a seen you'll be deemed a just man but not uh, a just man that that uh, would be uh, worthy of eternal salvation. The faith that gives eternal salvation is, uh, the, the thing that give, gives eternal salvation, that justified before God is by through faith, not by works, but uh, But uh, the, the father, uh, Abraham, was justified, a just man, by works, that he, he has a glory bef before men. That would be a, a father of many nations. He has honor and glory in this world by, by works. But he was not justified before God, his faith. In chapter 5, Genesis 15, is when he was saved. In, in 17, he received the seal of that righteousness, which he acquired by, by faith in 15, in chapter 15. But he uh, was blessed in verse 22, in chapter 22, that's when 
the second time where his faith was counted to him to righteousness before men. Lord, before men, faith of many nations, a father of many nations. So anyways, to continue to end this, you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. So a faith that produces love, that is not that you're not suppressing, uh, uh, suppressing or quenching the Holy Spirit because the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, a faith that works by love. So how can you say if you have faith, but you do not love people? It's an empty faith. It, it's unprofitable faith. Likewise, also the, not the whole rabbi, oh, Rahab, the harlot justified by works when she had received the messenger and sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. A dead faith, unprofitable faith, a unfruitful faith. How can you say, it's saying, it's pressing the question, how can you say you have faith, but you do not love men, that you do not sh shine your love before men, that you give, uh, give what is needy and don't show partiality. The, the two, uh, the two uh, problems that he was solving is partiality and a faith that loves men by uh, giving what what the, they need. Either feed them now hungry, clothe them now naked. That's what it means. Not the, not just what works that doesn't mean that faith and works justify you or. A works justify you uh, counts for your salvation to maintain your salvation or, or whatnot. So we conclude with Galatians. Um, yeah, I think I concluded there. Um, Galatians five one to seventeen uh, one to seven. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not attained again with the yoke of bondage. As the law of liberty made us free, not attained with the yoke of bondage, which is the law. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall not profit you in nothing. For I testify again to every man that's circumcised, he is better to do the whole law. Christ has become no effect unto you, whatsoever you are justified by the law. You're fallen from grace. For so it, it's it doesn't mean you nothing. For we through the spirit wait for the hope by righteousness by faith. Through the spirit, we wait for this hope of salvation of imputed righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith worketh by love. So in Je for in Jesus Christ, circumcision is not is not uh, does not is not worth anything, and uncircumcision doesn't is not worth anything, but a faith that worketh by love. Ye did run, did run well, but who did hinder you? That you should not obey the truth, obey the truth, the gospel, which faith works by love and genuine faith. So, a faith without love is a dead faith, unfruitful. A love that, a love, a, a faith that loves, that does not show partiality. A, a love, if you actually um, are not suppressing the fruits of the spirit. If you save faith, you should love these people, not be partial, and actually, and and not be partial, and uh, only uh, honor uh, rich men and not poor men. 
if you say of love, give give food to the hungry, clothe clothe the naked. So that's what it is. If you say if you have faith and do not give of food to hungry or do not clothe the naked, do you really have faith at all? That's an empty faith, a dead faith. That's what it means. By works you are justified, seen as just before men. But you are not justified before God by works. Um, you are justified by faith alone. But your a faith that saves it, produces love, and a faith that that loves produces works and gives what uh, gives to the needy. So that's what it, what it means. Don't don't uh, get confused that uh, well we have to do works to maintain our salvation or, or whatever variation you're thinking of. So, so that, that's what uh, the interpretation I get uh, that, that I see that it's correct. Um, so I just wanted to point that out there that, uh, um, so, so people are not confused about, about this uh, verse, this chapter. So uh, I hope this uh, gives you some insight, and uh, and hopefully it uh, it edifies you, and that you grow in your faith and grow in your knowledge of the wisdom that comes from God, spiritual wisdom. Be filled with spiritual wisdom, and uh, may God bless you. Amen. And uh, thank you. Take care.